What's up, YouTube? This is Red Zone 101. I want to put a subject that's been debated on for years to rest, hopefully with this video. And that subject is, can a recreational air gun be used for self-defense? Is it an effective, viable means for self-defense? Now, I'm hoping with this demonstration it puts it to rest. Now, that said, air guns are actually used for self-defense. This right here is called a Berna HD launcher. We don't call it a gun because when you say gun in the climate we live in today, people freak out. And people that are looking for a non-lethal option for self-defense aren't looking for a gun. That's why we call this a, a launcher. It's CO2 powered. And it shoots these, and it shoots these .68 uh, projectiles here. This is nylon. It's uh, very, very durable. And if you get hit with it, they hurt. Um, so this is designed from the ground up to be used for self-defense. And it's an air gun. A CO2 launcher. Let's call it that. Let's give it a shoot. Let's give it a few shots. I missed the first shot, still getting used to the red dot sight. Normally I'm used to traditional sights, but anyway, you get the, you get the picture. That right there is definitely going to be enough to deter a would-be attacker with good shot placement. So, could a recreational air gun be used in a self-defense situation? Okay, down there I've got a couple of, I think those are 64 round Sprite bottles, what have you. I don't drink pop, so I don't have a problem with taking those out. But anyway, we're going to try these here. I've got a Crossman DPMS. I have a Crossman AK-1. And I have a Crossman. This is the MTV. And uh, they all shoot .177 caliber BBs. Uh, the max velocity is 430 feet per second. And that's probably with your lightest projectiles. So you know what, without further ado, let's see what happens when we shoot these uh, uh, pop, whatever. I don't drink a lot of pop. These pop bottles, what have you, plastic pop bottles. Anyway, here we go. First one. Turn on the red dot. Third one. Third one. I didn't hit anything because guess what? I forgot to sight in this red dot. And I'm gonna have to clean that. That's got pop one. Bottom line, I think you get the picture here. Um if that was me, I would not want to be standing in front of those plastic pop bottles, okay? And I don't think any would-be attacker, if they came into your home, granted, this would not be my first choice for self-defense. If I was going for something, I'd probably go for my 9 mil, and it is loaded. I am carrying it. If I'm looking for something non-lethal, I'd probably go with my Berna HD launcher. Now that said, in a self-defense situation, an emergency situation, if all you had was one of these, now you saw these two were sighted in, and you see what happened. Not only did it hit the plastic pop bottles, but the force was enough to knock them over. Now can you imagine somebody standing in front of that, and you're using, it is empty, you're using good shot placement. I'm talking about center mass, or if they have a heavy coat on, we're talking about self-defense, someone's trying to break into your house, somebody's trying to hurt you and your family. Headshot. We're talking 25 BBs coming at you at at least 400 feet per second. You saw what it did to the, the plastic pop bottle. Same thing with this one here. It is empty. 
What's nice about this particular mag here, this is a Crossman mag that actually holds 300 rounds. There's reserve. You pull this down here until it clicks. You have to shake it. Now granted, in a self-defense situation, you're probably not going to be uh, doing this because after the first 25 rounds coming at the person, trust me, the person is probably going to be fleeing, looking for, well, that's pop, <laughs> looking for medical attention. If they got hit with 25 BBs coming at them that fast, head first. Now I'm still getting used to this, this magazine. Let's see here if I can I'll get it to work. Okay. Again, you would not want to be standing in front of one of these. I really like Crossman because they make really good products that that work. Granted, CO2 can be a little difficult to work with. Well, not really. You put a CO2 in here, you don't want to leave it in for more than a day or two. So the drawback, this has to be ready to shoot when the perpetrator is trying to get into your house. Because otherwise, you got to try to put a CO2 in, screw it in to charge it. I mean, you know, to break the CO2, um, the seal. And then, you know, anyway, like you get what I'm saying. It takes time. But if it's already loaded and it's ready to go, someone is breaking into your house, let me tell you, I do believe that would be enough to stop a would-be attacker. At least to have him to have a change, him or her, because in these days, you never know to have a change of heart and choose another course of action. So anyway, I'm not going to make this uh, video that long. Um, I got to get that red dot, that red dot uh, was sighted in there. <laughs> anyway, people want to thank you for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. And hopefully this puts this, this debate of whether a recreational air gun in 177 an air gun could be used in a self-defense situation. Would it be effective? You tell me. Like I said, I wouldn't want to be standing in front of that, especially with someone that knew what they were doing, meaning someone who's trained in firearms, who can get on target quickly, accurately, and effectively, that can get good shot placement. Anyway, people, again, this is Red Zone 101. Thank you guys for watching. Man, I got a mess to clean up here. I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, again, want to say thanks for watching. If you like what you're seeing, if you like my channel, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, okay? On that note, hopefully we'll never have to use any of these or firearms for anything else but for recreation. You guys take care.